Hello everybody, John here, and today onto the garage, we're starting off by just emptying out Blue, the X358. She's leaving the fleet. Not because she's done anything wrong, but because she needs to make space for my next acquisition um something completely different and she's going to a good home she's going to a friend who's going to look after her, another jaguar fan so hopefully i'll continue to see her and get updates on her progress which has been a fine barge for me to fly up and down the motorways in i've done twenty-five thousand miles in her there or thereabouts and she's now done 165,000 miles and still running beautifully. Supremely comfortable place to be, well equipped, if the infotainment system is obviously of its era, not up to current standards and lacks uh, Bluetooth connectivity for music and all that sort of stuff. I've enjoyed having the long rear doors partially because it gives you somewhere great to sit and have your sandwiches. Um, I'm able to hook up via that unit and these cables to those screens and use my uh, phone to display anything I want. That's been quite cool. And since I've had the car, I've improved the audio system because that was blown amplifier and speakers cleaned her loved her serviced her new brakes all round calipers and discs and pads under the bonnet she's had new hoses for the auxiliary heater new hoses that connect the cooling to the exhaust gas recirculation recirculation system sorry um i fitted the mirror display and reversing camera which is just there to combat limo glass which you cannot see through from the outside and it's very dark on the inside plus the big distance you're looking through other than a few of the little nice to do's like I had a terror cleaned she's been great great companion for a great many miles what a great machine economical too has averaged 40 to the gallon despite my thoughts that my driving and uh, not actually worrying about fuel consumption just getting on with the job at hand because she's my work car would have dramatically increase the consumption but no so you can definitely do 40 to the gallon in a diesel xj don't you think that looks fabulous in that color it's called indigo blue i've added the bright work of the um, intakes for other than that she's pretty much as standard except for the to the garage stickers obviously and she's going over to a new owner now i'm going to take her over and then maybe we'll look at what she's been replaced by you could never replace her but what i'm going to use as my motorway mile muncher and more for the next year or so see how we get on it's going to be exciting and i doubt anybody will have guessed the next vehicle that i'm owning well, it's freezing cold. Blue has now left the building and next door to me is a new car. And I'll give you a few seconds to try and guess it. And if you want to guess, then obviously I'll uh, say pause now. But um, we've gone for something a little different. But think three and a half litre V6 rear wheel drive very well equipped japanese 
and something for me to learn a hell of a lot about because so different. If you'd like to have a bit of a guess, pause now. And for those of you who can't wait, let's go meet Ellie. And here is Ellie. She's a 2005 Nissan El Grand. And I know some of you are going to think this is going to leave you completely cold. Others will be incredibly excited. And I think the majority would just be going, what? Because this is a Japan domestic market vehicle or JDM vehicle. It's not available, was never intended to be sold in the UK or indeed most other countries. It was imported to the UK by its previous owner in 2018. She's done about 65,000 miles. These are not a common sight in the UK, but as grey imports go, they are one of the vehicles us Brits do like to take a punt on because nothing else quite does the job, with the exception of maybe a Toyota Alphard, equally random rare machine. <coughs> so what is this? Some of you will be familiar with the concept of cars in Japan being known as K-cars or K-E-I. It's a classification of vehicle based on a footprint and CCs. And it says that the car has to be under a certain size, width, weight and CC to be classified as a K-car. And it has tax implications and ties in with uh, regulations in Japan, but if you live in a city, you can only purchase a vehicle for which you have an appropriate parking space. So it doesn't matter how much money you've got, if you want a sports car, but you only own the rights to a parking space that is X by Y dimensions, you can only buy a car that is X by Y dimensions. And so you might want an XK8, but you're having a cappuccino, Suzuki cappuccino. So that's how some of the car classifications go. <clears throat> this and the Toyota Alphard suit another classification which is considerably larger and very unrestricted in terms of uh, power that says, yeah, I know you've got lots of money. <laughs> I know you want a sports car. I know you want a limousine. I know you want a pickup truck and a minibus and a camper van, but you've only got parking space that's X by Y, and this is all that's gonna fit. So that's all you can have. Doesn't matter how much money you throw at me. And so this sort of classification of vehicle was created. And I said, well, how the hell does that satisfy anybody? Because, hey, John, you've bought a van. Not a conventional looking van at that. What we've ended up with is, yes, a van. It's a very well-constructed van because it's smaller than a VW T4. I think it's smaller than a VW T5, but I'm less familiar with those. Um, we'll have a look into dimensions another day. It weighs 2.2 ton. It's incredibly heavily constructed. Next thing, the running gear comes from a Nissan 350Z. So this is a V6, three and a half litre petrol. So it goes all right. Next is, for all I need relatively a limousine or luxury, well, you get your blingy grill, which is beautiful for some and not for others. But I wanted it to be luxurious. <clears throat> well, check out your little palace. This is not a rough and ready van. 
and we'll get into the details in a separate video because to be honest I'm freezing but this is elegant ah but one of the other things you see I, I wanted a minibus Minibus with the longest leg room I've ever seen. And leg room in the back of here is longer than in most other cars I've ever been in. Ah, but I also wanted a van. And this is an eight-seater vehicle. And yeah, it's got a very generous boot for this style of vehicle, but it ain't no van. Except every seat is permanently attached to runners. That mean you can completely change the layout at the drop of a hat. Yeah, yeah, but you still can't get a lot in it like it's a van. Except, yes you can. This is quite a magical vehicle. Very, very clever. And so today is not the day for details, but the equipment levels are fantastic. And remember, this car is 17 years old. So it reassures us that the Japanese domestic market vehicles are right up there with the UK in terms of demanding incredibly high specifications possibly even more so with niche vehicles like this. So there's a LCD screen that drops down from the ceiling uh, in that panel up there. We have electrically operated curtains and blinds. The rear has its own air conditioning and heaters, all of which are controlled via remote controls in the backs of the seats. The front has multiple monitors, blind spot monitoring, camera systems built into mirrors. This is a very interesting vehicle. And one that's gonna give me fun for quite some time as I work out all of its little secrets and work out its wrinkles. No idea. No idea. No idea. Again, like blue, I managed to buy a really good looking vehicle in very decent nick with a couple of known little issues for a very reasonable price. I'm not going to go into what I paid because it was a private sale and the person who sold it to me may not want to share that, but I would say if you weren't looking for one of these in a similar condition, mileage, spec, etc., in the UK, then your search would start at about £9,000. Uh, that assumes it's already in the UK and you're not importing it. I didn't pay anything like that. Uh, you can easily spend £20,000 buying yourself an L Grand in exactly the trim, spec, configuration that you fancy. And you can specify everything, including four wheel drive transmission, full leather, camper, interior, you name it. Right, well, it's freezing cold. I have a mission for, for today, which is merely to check her out and make sure I've got no unknown issues 
but will prevent me from driving her 500 miles <laughs> in the next couple of days. So I'm going to get on with that and I'll see you all again real soon onto the garage with some new stuff I've got lined up for Purdy. Some repairs and mods and tweaks that I'm uh, ready to share. I've also got some great input from our fellow subscribers. So there'll be a XK8 show coming up real soon. And Ruby, the A-Class motorhome, is also going to be pressed into action quite shortly. And there's a few things I'm going to be sharing on that. But this year, lots and lots of XKA action. Let me know what you think of Ellie. Good choice, bad choice. Good points, bad points. Really looking forward to it. See you soon, guys. Bye. If you're enjoying our channel, then don't forget to subscribe and click the little bell icon so you get notifications of new videos. And please give us a thumbs up or thumbs down and you can share the videos. And below the video is always the area where you can comment and get involved with the chat.